Hey guys, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where I teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. And I want to ask you something, and it's very important, so think carefully about it. Do you want to take the blue pill, or do you want to take the red pill? Now if you take the blue pill, the tutorial ends right now. But if you take the red pill, I will show you how to create this awesome title effect from the newest Matrix Resurrections movie. Now, okay guys, all jokes aside, last week the first trailer of the new Matrix movie was released. And I noticed some awesome text effects to recreate in Premiere Pro. Now we can't replicate it the exact same way because they use 3D for this, but we're gonna do our best to recreate it as best as possible in Premiere Pro. I started off by choosing the right font and luckily there's a font on Adobe Fonts called Matrix and it just looks perfect. Then I open up Premiere Pro and create a new graphics layer by hitting Ctrl T on your keyboard. Now since we're going to animate each letter individually, I'm going to type the first letter, which is M in this case. Then I open up the Essential Graphics panel from the window menu and give it the right font size, position and color, which is going to be a darkish green by the way. I'm then going to duplicate the layer and change the letter. I keep on doing this until I have my entire word. Now keep in mind, the longer the word, the more duplicates of course. Now don't forget to position them properly as well. You can always use rulers and guides from the program monitor to help you line out the letters and form the word. Once that's done, we're going to make it look a bit more 3D-ish and animated. Now from the effects panel, look for the drop shadow effect and edit on one of the letters. Then make it white and set the softness to zero. We want to give it a harsh edge. Then set the distance to around 10. We'll make the opacity 50%. And then we're going to animate the direction going from minus 20% to around 30%. Next letter, I'm going to animate the opposite way. So from 30 to minus 20. Now reverse it for every following letter. Then add another drop shadow effect, set the color to light green, the opacity to 50, the direction to 45 and the distance to 5. And once again, change the direction with each letter between 45 or minus 45. Hold up there, Mr. Anderson. There's a glitch in the matrix and this transmission needs to be watched in order to proceed with this tutorial. And I know what you're thinking, because right now I'm thinking the exact same thing. If you're watching this tutorial, it means you're on the verge of becoming a great and successful editor. But there's something that all editors need, knowledge. Because knowledge is power. So check this out, Mr. Anderson. Our awesome, highly rated, advanced Premiere Pro class. And what's so good about it? Well, not only do you get to refresh your basic editing workflow, you will learn all there is to know about advanced shortcuts. The difference between fit to frame and scale to frame size. How to do pancake editing. How to edit a multi-camera sequence and how to work with multi-language closed captions. Now, the secrets of advanced animations with keyframing will be revealed together with the ability to create custom presets from essential graphics, and how to properly use track matte transitions, masking techniques, and of course, how to export your work properly. And all of this information can be yours. Just click on the first link in the description down below and get one month of free access. But now, Let's dive deep back into the matrix. Now comes the animation part and the reason I put every letter on a different track because this way we can animate each letter separately. And for the animation itself, we're gonna go a bit further in time and add a keyframe for the position of the letter. Now you can create this by hitting the stopwatch icon next to the position value. And then we're going to the beginning of the timeline and change the position of the letter. Right click on the last keyframe and select ease in so it goes smoothly onto its final position. Now repeat these steps for every letter, but change the positioning of each. Each individual letter should come from a different direction. Next, select all of the layers and nest them together by right clicking and selecting nest. Then from the effects panel, look for the wave warp effect and drag it onto that nested layer. Now from the effect controls, set the wave type to square. Set the wave speed to zero because we're going to animate it ourselves. Then set the wave width to something like 60. If it's too low or too high, it looks a bit weird. Now we really want it to look like a digital glitch. And after that, animate the wave height going from 30 in the beginning to around two or three at the end. And next up, we want a bit of glow around our text. And if you've seen our glow tutorial, you know how to do it properly. And if you haven't, then don't forget to check out the link in the top right corner. Now, since you're asking so kindly, I'll show you one more time how to do it. First, duplicate your nested layer and then add the Gaussian blur effect onto the bottom layer. And change the blurriness to around 20. And bam, 
done. Now to top it all off, I'm going to storyblocks.com, which is a stock library, and I'm going to add some overlays, such as a green glow and an anamorphic flare. Then I add the set matte effect to it, so it only applies to the text layer. And lastly, I downloaded the iconic matrix background, which I also found on Storyblocks. BAM! This is our final result. Okay, looks like you've taken the red pill after all. And now you have an awesome matrix styled text effect. And that's it for today unfortunately guys, but I hope to see you guys next week for a new tutorial. And as always, stay creative.